Hello there everyone and thank you for joining us for today's webinar. Today we're going to be going over the GDS 3710 IP video door station. Uh, my name is Dorothy, I'm the marketing manager here at Grandstream and I'm also joined by one of our engineers, Abdel, who will be assisting us with the technical training portion of today's webinar. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. So let's, we're going to start with an introduction on the GDS 3710. This is a new product to Grandstream's portfolio. It was released in the end of March 2017, so it's been on the market just for a few months. It's a hemispheric IP video door system with 180 degree wall-to-wall -wall coverage. We'll show you a bit more of that uh, throughout the presentation. It serves as a high definition IP video surveillance camera and also an IP intercom system that offers facility access control and, sec and security monitoring. It integrates with Grandstream devices to, com to provide a complete end-to-end -end solution for access control, video intercom, and security recording needs. We'll show you shortly how this integrates with our other devices such as our IP phones, our UCM series IP PBXs, and other surveillance products. So here are the different access options that the GDS 3710 provides. Uh, so the, you can either use RFID cards or FOBs. So the keypad you see there um, in the image is also an RFID card reader. Additionally, you can use custom numeric codes. Um, so once again, you see the codes there, and you can do um, you know, four-digit codes, six-digit codes. Everything is customizable based on how you need it for your deployment. It also offers guest codes, which are determined by time settings. So you can, for example, you can set guest codes that allow a certain or generic code to be used from 9 till 5 every day. However, after those specific times, that guest code is no longer available and only those with um, you know, personalized access or custom access can get in with a separate code. Additionally, if you need um, extra security in terms of um, you know, door access, you can use dual authentication, which would require both an RFID scan, whether it's using a card or a fob, and a code combination together in order to open the door. As for the controlled access, you can either have a ring doorbell feature, you see the doorbell button there. You can also dial an extension, or you can even use motion detection. So at, once you set the field of motion detection, if there's anything um, noticed in that view, you can set an automatic call to the phone or device of your choice. Another important feature of the GDS 3710 is, of course, the intercom feature. So it has a built-in digital microphone with up to 1.5 meter range and a built-in HD loudspeaker with up to 3 meter range. The audio is also full duplex with advanced AEC background noise depression. That way it's not a walkie-talkie, you can speak freely both ways, and it also allows you to install this in perhaps noisy environments. Maybe it's outside, um, you know, out near streets, therefore you need to make sure that any type of street background noise is not interfering with any of the audio directly um, in front of the GDS. It also supports alarm in and alarm out. So there are two alarm inputs for door sensors and other devices, as well as two alarm outputs for devices such as electronic locks or light switches. Now when it comes to installation, the GDS 3710 is an indoor-outdoor device and it can be in-wall mounted or surface mounted. So if you want to in-wall mount the device, you would be able to purchase a separate accessory for this. The image you see on the left-hand side shows the in-wall mount feature. As for surface mounting, that is how the device comes already in the box, um, and that way you, know, you won't have to purchase anything in addition if you just want to surface mount the device. As mentioned, it is indoor-outdoor, IPv66 weatherproof, and IK09 vandal resistant. It can operate in a wide range of temperatures, so you know some of you may be in incredibly hot humid environments, some of you might experience incredibly cold winters, I know here in Boston, uh, we get both extremes, so um, this device will be able to set 
um, get you set for many, many different um, environments. So the operation temperature goes down to negative 30 degrees Celsius, which is negative 22 degrees Fahrenheit, and all the way up to 60 degrees Celsius or 140 degrees Fahrenheit. When it comes to storage, you can store it just a little bit colder at negative 35 degrees Celsius or negative 31 degrees Fahrenheit and up to 60 degrees Celsius. As for humidity, it's non-condensing and can handle up to 10 to 90 percent. Now, a defining feature of the GDS 3710 is the hemispheric view, which allows you a 180 degrees wide by 150 degree high camera view. Um, so this is just a quick example. This is actually the GDS installed directly outside of our office. Got myself in the middle of it, a uh, sales manager for our Latin America region, and also an engineer in the back there. We were just uh, playing around when we first got the device. So um, we wanted to make sure that you know, we can see what this is going to set up like outside of our office. And you can actually see down all the way, down one hallway, all the way into the main entrance of the office building, all within one singular view. Mm -hmm. It also comes with a 2 megapixel imaging sensor and H.264 high profile. You can also have up to four concurrent video streams, so it's not just one device accessing the video stream at one time. You can submit, you can have up to 1080p uh, video, uh, resolution video for an NVR recording, up to 720p on a PC or video phone, VGA to mobile apps, and also 720p still image capturing. It also features wide dynamic range to support a wide variety of light environments and also has built-in LEDs for face illumination. It's important to note this is not an infrared device. The built-in LEDs are for face illumination directly in front of the GDS 3710 unit itself. If you are looking for other light features um, in dark environments, you can use a separate um, infrared light in order to achieve this. It also features lens distortion correction as well. Now, one of the main things we're going to focus on in today's webinar is the GDS Management Utility Software. This is free to download on grandstream.com, and it is essentially the main controller of the GDS 3710. What it allows you to do is um, control your R or, um, issue your RFID cards, um, issue your codes, manage multiple GDS 3710s in one location. Um, you can also um, download a bunch of reports that will show you who has been entering at what times of day. Um, so it'll either track you by your code or your RFID, um, and it can make sure that it's seeing everything that comes in and out of um, the door that is being monitored. And as I mentioned, it is available on grandstream.com in the resources section of the GDS 3710 or on our tools page. So we'll go into this in a little bit when Abdel goes ahead and gives us the training portion of today's webinar. Now just to touch on a few things, um, since the GDS 3710 is new to the Grandstream portfolio, um, you know, we want to make sure that everyone is aware of how it can integrate with Grandstream's existing products. We want to make sure this is not just going to be a standalone device, but since many of our resellers are already very active with our phones, our IPPBXs, and other surveillance products, to show you how exactly this new device can already integrate in existing solutions or deployments that you've already done or into new ones that you might have coming up. So first of all, it integrates seamlessly with the GXB3275 and GXB3240 video phones. Uh, so the motion detection configuration on the GDS 3710 can actually store video feeds directly on these two phones. You can also have an open and closed door feature. It can store snapshots, and of course, you can watch live video feeds, as well as use the intercom functionality. When it comes to the GXP2100 series, it also integrates with these devices seamlessly. You have an open closed door feature, which we'll show you shortly. And you can also store snapshots as these phones do support photos. Um, additionally, you can watch live video feeds. This is a beta feature available on the beta firmware right now. Uh, we'll demo it shortly. Um, just to be clear, the GXP phones are not video phones, but we do have a special feature available where they can do a um, brief live video feed um, from the GDS 3710 directly. And of course, it does support intercom functionality. Um, and then when it comes to our basic and mid-range phones, 
the GXP1600 series and GXP1700 series, as well as our DEC series, it can support intercom functionality only, as these phones are a little bit more um, basic in the feature set they provide. So here is just a quick example of what the one-touch entry using the GFC 3275 would look like. It's also compatible on the 3240 as well. Uh, so what you see here is uh, me ringing the doorbell, and right on the screen of the GFC 3275, you have an open door button. You can click on that, and it opens the door right away. You can also protect that with a code, so you can click open door. It'll ask for a code. Once you input the code, you can open the door if you'd like an added level of security. And here, quickly, is a image of the video stream to a GXP2100 series. This is a 2140, for example. Um, so what the 2100 series can do is, of course, store snapshots. And this is how you can watch those live video feeds. It'll show you um, a quick frame kind of video. Um, it's not going to be the highest resolution, but it'll be able to show you a live feed of what's in front of the GDS3710. And of course, you have an open closed door feature with or without code. You can see a soft key listed there that says open door in this example. And then lastly, of course, the GDS3710 integrates seamlessly with our network video recorders and our uh, cameras as well. So we carry the GVR3552 and GVR3550. It can record directly in either FHD or HD recording quality. Um, both NVRs will record and store these live videos as well as audio, and you can store up to 16 terabytes of recording. It is also important to note that because this is a SIP device, you can use other um, SIP products. You do not have to use Grandstream phones. You do not have to use NVRs, our NVRs. Of course, we recommend that you do. Um, however, if you are deploying this in a location that already has exist an existing NVR solution or existing IP phones, you don't need to switch the whole thing over. Um, everything is, of course, on SIP standards, so it's interoperable with a wide variety of different products. Now, to get a little bit more in the weeds with the technical deployment scenarios, um, this is a depiction of what a full solution using the GDS3710 would look like. Uh, so, in the back end, you would have a UCM series IP PBX, and that would be running you know, your entire network with your um, with the extensions and the call routing from the GDS to phones within your location. And then the GDS itself would be connected back into an NVR and also into the alarm out and alarm in devices. So with alarm outs, you can connect the GDS 3710 to an electric door strike, lighting controls, and also alarms such as sirens. And with alarm in, you can um, connect it with things such as infrared sensors or door and window sensors. And then all of the GDSs in your network can be, can be monitored and controlled directly through GDS Manager. All right, before we get into the technical training with Abdel, we'll just touch on a few deployment scenarios so you can envision where the GDS 3710 can be used you know, based on the category of the deployment. So many of our uh, resellers do, of course, small and medium-sized businesses. That's where uh, Grandstream really um, targets with a lot of our products. So to start, what you would basically do in your typical small and medium business deployment is you would start with a GWN 7000 router or a router of some sort to, of course, bring your network into the building. Um, then you'd connect your UCM IP PBX from there. This is where you'll branch out the rest of your solutions. So on one end, you'll have the GDS 3710. And that will be connected with, um, you know, your via the, G, the UCM. And with the GDS, you can configure it however you need with custom access codes for employees or RFID cards. Uh, you can have the GDS 3710 dialing specific extensions, uh, whether it's you know when the doorbells ring or you can actually call an extension directly through the keypad of the GDS. And that would of course all go through your IP PBX. Uh, you can set your motion detection alert. Um, it can be sent to an admin, reception, or whoever you'd like to send it to. And you, of course, can view and manage employee access through GDS Manager through the reports that we mentioned. On the other end, you have your IP phones. You can pick all your endpoints as need be, whether you need our you know, small business phones, our basic, um, our mid-range. And those phones can all receive calls, some video, some just audio from the GDS 3710, and, um, and you can configure those as, as, however you need. 
And then, of course, there's the IP surveillance. So you can mix and match uh, different indoor and outdoor cameras, um, configure a NVR to that solution as well. So the NVR will be taking your surveillance from not only your cameras, but of course also the GDS 3710. Now when it comes to multi-building complexes, you can manage multiple GDS 3710s in one location using GDS Manager. So here you would again start with your routers and your IP PBXs, one in each location and then you'd branch out your GDS 3710 and your IP phones from there. So as we mentioned, GDS Manager can manage multiple GDS 3710s in one location, so you can have one central security office that can handle every single unit you have deployed within the complex. You can have, of course, custom access codes for employees and RFID cards for entry, and you can also have areas that have restricted access where only um, a certain amount of people can actually enter. Um, so you'd have your own RFID or your own code. If you don't have that, then you're not able to enter. So this could be perhaps maintenance. You want them to be able to enter everywhere, but a few departments only need access to their own building. So you can manage all of that directly through GDS Manager. You can also set motion detection near alarm alerts, which would be sent directly to a central location for all of the GDS units involved. On the other side, of course, you would just choose your endpoints, got your IP video phones that you can choose from, and then, of course, your IP surveillance, which can be monitored all in one location as well. Now, when it comes to multi-location offices, where you're much more dispersed than just a uh, multi-building complex, you can still make sure that all your GDS 3710s are connected uh, together. So what you would do is have your routers in each building connected via VPN, and of course have your UCM IP PBXs linked together as well. From here, you can have your GDS 3710 connected back to your IP PBX and managed through GDS Manager. Uh, so you can even have you know, a, a motion detection alert sent from one building to another uh, person at a different physical location if you want all sorts of alarm notifications being sent to one central place. All this is, of course, made possible through the use of an IPPBX secured through that VPN connection. Alrighty, so enough on the intro details. We're going to go into the technical training portion. Um, just so everybody knows, we are recording this, and we will send a recording to all the attendees, and we will make this available on Reseller Connect so you can reference it again at any time. Um, so now I'm just going to pass it over to Abdel, and we'll uh, screen share. Oh, yes, please. All righty. Let's see. Let me exit mine and pass it off to you. There we go. All right. Thank you, Dorothy. And thanks for everyone for joining this webinar. For the second part of this webinar, uh, I'll be showing you the web UI and how you can manage and configure the GDS for the different scenarios. So the first thing, as you might notice, uh, I'm not using the web browser, Firefox or Chrome, uh, because these two web browsers, for example, like Firefox, since version 52, they stopped supporting the NP API, which allows the, the video streaming on your browser. So on this uh, webinar, I'm using GDS, uh, I'm sorry, I'm using the SeaMonkey, which is a browser that allows uh, live streaming of video using the plugin. So the first thing that you need to do when, when you connect to uh, the GDS Web UI is install the plugin so that you can have uh, the live video streaming showing on your browser. Uh, the login, the same for all grand stream devices, it's admin, admin to login. So when you log in, you can have, see a web interface similar to this one. Then you can have the option, the live view, which gives you the option, of course, to play video to stream video on your browser. Uh, it also gives you options of different video profiles, which provides a different resolution, where profile one has the highest resolution, and then profile three has the lowest resolution, and you can also see the, uh, the video quality changes uh, by changing the profiles. Uh, you can also use this button so you can start listening to whatever is uh, happening on the on the GDS. You can also take uh, snapshots. 
you can also start recording. And when you click on recording, uh, you need to make sure that you have the path configured properly. For example, in my case, or by default, usually by default, it's uh, all the recordings are uh, recorded uh, in the C drive, uh, in the folder uh, record. So I'm just gonna make a short example here. So this is like a five second recording. So if I go to my C drive and then look for the record folder, which is this one, then look for normal, which is for video. So it's gonna give you the date of today. Then this is the last video that I can access those videos and play them from uh, my computer. For the setup and the configuration of the GDS manager, uh, because it supports SIP and it can uh, work as a SIP endpoint, the first thing that you need to do in, uh, if you are using an IP PBX is register the GDS manager to an IP PBX by giving it an extension. Uh, for this example, I'm using uh, an extension 1002. It's registered to my UCM, and the status is shown online, which means that uh, the account is registered. So after you enter the SIP settings, save and apply. Then under uh, SIP advanced settings, you have some options like the SIP registration expiration, and which profile, like video profile, you want to stream on the SIP calls especially if you are using the GDS to make video calls. And then you have the DTMF uh, that are supported. Uh, I just want to uh, emphasize this one, which says enable uh, direct IP call. If you are using GDS with another phone and you don't have an IP PBX at your location, you can actually create a peer-to-peer -peer connection uh, in which the GDS will talk directly to the IP device. For that scenario to work, you must have that one enabled. So if you uncheck that one, the peer-to-peer -peer connection is not gonna work for you. Then next you have the whitelist. The purpose of the whitelist is uh, you enter the extensions that are allowed to call the GDS. And I'm just gonna give you an example. You have someone visiting you, like in your house, and they are at the gate. They call you, hey, can you open the gate? By configuring whitelist, if you want to call the GDS so you can unlock the GDS remotely and unlock the door, you need to include your SIP extensions uh, under this list. If, for example, you have an extension registered to your GS Wave, and then you try to call from GS Wave to the door system, and your GS Wave extension is not included in the whitelist, you're not going to be able to call the GDS to unlock the door. So that's the purpose of the whitelist uh, setting. Now let's go back to the door uh, system setting. So when you click on this page, especially the basic settings, you have some options like unlocking latency, which is zero. That means once you press the DTMF, it's going to unlock immediately. Then you have the timeout to unlock hold. That means when you unlock it, it's going to remain open for five seconds. You can increase it if you would like, for example, to use 10 or 15 seconds. And then you have that option, capture image on unlock. So every time there is a user that comes to the GDS uh, device and they unlock the door, uh, the GDS will take a capture of that person. And the image will be stored in the TFTP server that you need to configure and their email an FTP server, and we're going to talk about that one after we finish uh, these top settings. Next, you have the doorbell system uh, and how you can configure them. For example, when you press the doorbell, you have two options, whether to use the SIP extension or to use the virtual number. SIP extensions, that means you're going to use the same extensions that is assigned to the GDS if you would like to use virtual number. Uh, this is useful in case uh, you have GDS installed in a building with many apartments. Uh, instead of using the extensions, you can actually use just the apartment number so that people, when they try to call, they can just use the apartment number and the, the GDS will interpret that number as a virtual number. So for the this uh, webinar, I'm just going to use the SIP number. And then you have the doorbell mode, which gives you three options. 
when you press the doorbell button on the GDS, what do you want it to do? Do you want it to call uh, a number like SIP extension? Or do you want it to uh, send, send a signal to uh, an output? Or do you want both of them? The case where you're going to use, for example, this one, when you have like, uh, when, you, when you press the doorbell, you can connect actually one of those uh, bells to uh, the output connector in the, in the cover back of the GDS so that when they press that one, it's going to ring your phone, especially if you have both of them. It's going to ring your extension, and then it's going to ring like a, a bell that has a loud uh, sound so you can hear it in case you are you are deploying this device in a warehouse where there's a lot of noise. So I'm just going to use the doorbell uh, number. Then I'm going to include the extension 1005. That means once I press the doorbell button, the, the GDS is going to call extension 1005. This is in case you are using SIP extensions. For the scenario where you don't have the SIP server, but you're only using a uh, peer-to-peer -peer connection, Let's say I have this GXP phone, and the IP address of my GXP phone is uh, 192, that's 168, that's 22, that's 09. Uh, um, just to let everyone know, we'll have time at the end for a question and answer session. So uh, either we can hold off on questions for now, or you can submit them through the chat and we'll address them at the end. So, uh, Abdul, you can continue through your, uh, right. your training, and we'll address Q&As at the end. Thanks so much. Yeah, sure, no problem. Uh, so as I said, this is the IP address of my uh, GXP phone, and I want to create like a peer-to-peer -peer connection. So I'm just going to put the IP address in there. Of course, you have to specify the port. The port number depends on which account on the GXP phone, for example, you want to use. Uh, on the grand sim devices, each account increments by two. For example, account one is using port 5060. Account two is using port 5062. Uh, account three is using 5064. Let's say I have this uh, account three and I want to use it with the GDS manager, so I'm going to use port 5064, uh, which is the third account. So every time I press the doorbell button, the UCM, uh, the GDS is going to initiate an IP call to that IP on that specific port, and then you can specify the DTMF or the PIN number that you want to use, for example, to unlock the door. For this example, I'm using uh, the, the DTMF 999 uh, to unlock the door. And then at the bottom here, you have the options. I mean, how do you want to use this, for example, in case you don't want them to call in, just come to the GDS and then punch in a number to, uh, to, to unlock the, the door. You have three options. You can use the private card pin, and this is something that I'm going to show you when we talk about the card management. Or you can use a unified pin. Let's say you are family and all of you, you guys use the same pin, and that pin is 555. You can just configure it this way. So everyone who wants to unlock the door, they're going to use the same pin number, which is 55 to unlock the door. Or you can make it even more secure, which means they need to swipe the card and also include the PIN number, which is a two-layer security for, for the GDS. And then you have that option, enable uh, DTMF open door, because on our devices like the GXP and the GXV, the video phone, now we support a feature that we call open door. So instead of you, like someone when they call you, instead of punching the, the DTMF number or the PIN number to unlock the door, you can simply uh, press that icon so you can unlock the door. So I'm going to show you how you can configure that one, then we come back here so we can continue uh, 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 explaining the other settings. So I'm just going to go back here to the GXP phone. Then I'm going to create, for example, a peer-to-peer -peer connection. Remember, we're going to use account 3. So I'm just going to call it a, a GDS, and then I'm going to put the IP address of my GDS, which is 192.168.22.118, and you can put any user ID. This is something that, since it's a peer-to-peer -peer connection, it doesn't matter what uh, user ID you're using. So when you do that, make sure you go to SIP settings, basic settings, and then disable SIP registration because, because we're going to be creating a peer-to-peer -peer connection. 
Then this is one of the latest features that, that, that have been included in the GXP uh, latest firmware, which is specifically for the GDS. So I'm just going to use GDS, then I'm going to choose account 3, which is uh, tiered to the GDS. Then under the system identification, I'm going to put the IP address of the GDS. System number also 118, and then the password that we configured is 999999 to unlock the door. So now I'm just going to make a test call and see, see how we, so we can show the open door icon. Let me just run the live view. shows you like it gives you two options like when it when it's ringing it's showing you uh, it's showing you some screenshots and then you have that option where you can open the door just by pressing that option it's going to send the DTMF to unlock the door and just talking about the the video feed on the GXP phones uh, it's not real video streaming but what happens, the video, the phone is going to receive like three video, like uh, JPEG frames per two seconds, which means every two seconds it's going to receive three JPEG picture that's going to look like it's a, it's a video streaming on the GXP phone. So next, uh, we move on to the card management. And this is where you create your users, you give them the password. So I'm just going to create one. Uh, let's say I'm going to create one for Steve and his PIN number to unlock the door, I'm going to give him 555, he's a male. The ID number, you can use any number, it doesn't matter. This is only to differentiate between the users. If he has a card number, you can either enter the card number manually into this, this setting or you can simply enable uh, scanning on the GDS so you can scan the cards and then the UCM will, I'm sorry, the GDS will populate the, uh, the card numbers under the card management. So the virtual number for Steve is going to be, for example, 12. He lives in apartment 102. And the SIP number, if someone calls 102, it's going to ring, let's say, his extension, which is 1001. Then enable. So every time, let's say, for example, for the Francisco case, uh, he's using uh, pin number 555, and his virtual number is 1006. For Francisco, for example, to come and unlock the door, he, when he gets at the GDS keypad, he needs to, uh, to press the following. So the first thing, it's going to be star plus his virtual number, which is 1006, star again, and then the pin number to unlock the door, which is going to be 55, and then the pound key to unlock the door. Again, for the card management, you can you can configure it manually, or you can use the GDS, uh, so you can scan all the cards and populate them in under the the card management. If you would like to use the the GDS, for example, to scan all the cards, just make sure you enable that one, save and apply. And then the GDS will, uh, will, will start working as a scanner, which means every time you swipe the card, it's going to scan it and enter the information under the card management. When you're done, make sure you uncheck that one, then save and apply again. Under the system settings, uh, this is where you configure the other settings, like date and time, the NTP server, uh, the network settings, whether you want to use DHCP, by, which is by default, or you can configure static IP address for uh, for the GDS. You can also configure uh, information about the access. For example, I'm using HTTP, which is by default port 443. You can change those ports uh, depending on your requirements. And also you have the user manager. Uh, this is where you change the password for the users. We talked already about the SIP settings and how you configure them, so now we're going to just move to our video and audio settings. 
When you go to video settings, it gives you this is where you configure the profiles or the streams. So you have profile one, two, and three. Each profile of these has its own resolution. Profile or stream one has the uh, the highest resolution, and the more resolution, of course, the, the higher the resolution, the more bandwidth it's going to take from your network. So you have to be careful which uh, profile you need to use, depending on how good is your is your network. Then you have information here about the OSD. For example, let's say I have uh, multiple GDSs and I want to differentiate which one is which. I can, for example, check display text and then I can call this GDS uh, front door. Save and apply. So if I go back to uh, GDS, you will notice that the front door is going to add up so I can see and differentiate between where the, 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 the GDS in, in your network. Next, we're going to move to alarm config. This is very useful. This is one of the, the best features on the, on the GDS. Let's say before you start configuring like motion detection, uh, the first thing you need to do is create your uh, alarm schedule. For example, I have that one configured, and it is configured for Sunday. For example, if I want to configure it for the weekend, so I'm just going to check Sunday and then Saturday. And you have that option copy, which means whatever I configure on Sunday is going to apply to uh, Saturday. Save and apply. If you notice here, it applies to both Sunday and Saturday. So after I create the profile, now I need to go and create the alarm action. So I need to create a profile. So let's call it motion detection, for example, for the weekend. You have six options that you can configure. Either upload to alarm center or voice alarm to sit uh, phone. Uh, this option, uh, the way it works, when you have motion detection enabled and you have that setting enabled under the, uh, the alarm action, the GDS is going to call your phone number. So when you answer, you're just going to hear alarm. And I'm going to show you later how this option will be useful, especially when we're going to configure the, uh, uh, the kidnap uh, option. You can also tell the, the GDS to send an email, and this is something that needs to be configured in the email and FTP settings, which means you need to go to these settings and configure the email that you want, you want it to be used for those email notifications. You can also sound an alarm if you have a, a siren, for example, connected to a, a digital output. You can also alarm output. Uh, the sound alarm, I'm sorry, this is, this is built into the GDS. Uh, if you have that one, for example, check the GDS is going to play its alarm sound, or if you have that one checked, the GDS is going to send signal to, let's say, a siren that is connected to uh, the output connector. You can also have that option checked in case there is any motion detection alarm action that has been triggered, the GDS will take a snapshot of that person, like a JPEG uh, image. Then make sure you save and apply. Then you go back, uh, yeah, I just want to mention this about the alarm action. Let me go back here one second. So when you configure this one, for example, voice alarm to sit phone, the GDS doesn't know which phone it needs to call. So this is something that you need to configure in the alarm phone. Let's say I want when this, when a motion detection or uh, an alarm action takes place, I want it to call extension 1003, save and apply. You can add multiple ones. So when there is an alarm, it's can, the GDS can call multiple phone numbers, not only uh, one. Then you go back to the alarm events and you start configuring your motion detection. The first thing, enable, of course, then region configure. For example, if I want only alarm uh, motion detection on this region, I can select it. I can select multiple regions, up to four. So I just want these regions. Save and apply. Then next, 
you can have the option to increase or decrease sensitivity. Then here you, you come here and choose which profile, the profile that we created, for example, and then the, uh, the alarm action, uh, which is profile one. Then next, this is where you configure the digital input and output. <clears throat> the digital input, uh, you can, for example, uh, configure it here. For example, if you have a light that is uh, a light sensor that is connected, for example, to, uh, to digital input one, once the alarm sensor gets triggered, the GDS can open the door automatically if you have that option, which is open door selected. The same thing for digital outputs, and this is something that we talked about when we were configuring the door system settings. We have the option whether to call a SIP extension or to send it to a digital output. The alarm config, you have several options here. You have the enable silently alarm mode, and you have enable hostage code. So in case you are at the door and someone holds a gun on you, for example, Instead of just using the regular PIN number that you use to unlock the door, you can have a different PIN number. Let's say you can have 66, something that's easy to remember, of course. <clears throat> and then you can associate it with a profile. So when you, for example, use that specific PIN number, which is the hostage code, the GDS uh, is going to call whatever. It's going to generate the alarms that you have configured under the alarm action. Let's say take a picture. If you if you have the option upload JPEG, it's going to upload JPEG. If you have the option uh, make a SIP call with alarm, it's going to call an extension. Then it's going to generate an alarm to make you aware that someone has been held uh, hostage. The only option that doesn't work with the hostage uh, option is generate alarm. It does not generate alarm. This is an option that's not going to work with the hostage code, of course, for safety reasons. Next, this is where you configure your email, enter the information for your email that you want to be using so that the GDS can send emails. Let's say I'm using a Gmail server, so I'm just going to include SMTP, uh, gmail.com, they're using port 580 on TLS or 465 on SSL. I can actually put that port here, 587, then enter your email address and then the password associated with the email address. Also, you can configure the FTP server if you want to upload your captures, your pictures, and snapshots to that FTP server. Just save and apply, and you can also test it to make sure that it's working. Then next, you have maintenance. This is where you do your maintenance uh, configuration, like upgrading, rebooting, resetting, or debugging in case you're doing some troubleshooting. Next, you have status. It gives you information about which firmware version you're running and how long the system has been up and whether it is registered or not registered. So this is pretty much all the settings available on the GDS. If you have any questions about other set settings that we didn't talk about, feel free to ask uh, your questions. So <clears throat> if you have one GDS, you can actually use the web UI, and it's going to serve all your purposes. But in case you are using like multiple GDS in your location, you will need the application, the GDS manager. So you can manage like more than one, more than two GDS from only one interface. You can download uh, the GDS manager from the GrandStream website. So just go to support, then tools. Then it's going to give you this uh, this page. Make sure you click on download the GDS manager software. So when you click on this software, it's actually a package that has two files or two applications. It has the GDS server and then the GDS manager. If you would like to use GDS manager, the first thing that I need to do is run the GDS server first. So I have it running here. Then it gives you the IP address that it's using. Usually it's the IP address of the computer on which it is running. Then you go ahead and click on GDS manager. So let me cancel. GDS manager, you just specify the ports for the GDS uh, server, and then you will be provided with this uh, web, uh, this application interface that allows you to manage a large group of GDS uh, devices. 
So the first thing is the basic information like the admin password in case you want to change it. You can create groups. You can actually create members from the GDS managers. Let's say you have, you're using this uh, GDS, you have multiple GDS and uh, you're managing the, uh, the RFID cards and the card numbers and you don't want to be going each time to the GDS to scan the cards, you have the option to use this GDS manager and then you can read the cards so you can upload them to the GDS manager. In case you want to use the read card, there is a small device that you need to purchase separately and it's, uh, it looks like this one. So this small device, you just connect it to USB port in your computer, of course, install the drive, and you can start installing, uh, I'm sorry, scanning all the RFD cards so that they can be uh, populated on the GDS manager. Or in case you want to enter it manual, this is also another option that you can do it. Put the name, uh, the virtual number, the SIP password, and also the PIN number to unlock the, the, the door. Then you have that option, search. So once you click on search, the GDS manager is going to start scanning your network to detect all the GDS devices in your network. Then you're going to see them from there, and then you can start adding one by one. For today, I only have one GDS device, which I already uh, configured. It's using this IP address with that specific port and with this specific uh, credentials. which is this one right here. <clears throat> uh, this is the real-time view. You have the option to display a lot of uh, more than one. You can have up to 72 channel window, which means if you have 72 uh, GDS, you can actually manage them from this interface without the need to log into each web UI of each device, uh, uh, of, of each the GDS device. Then you have the logs that tell you, uh, for example, extension or user, for example, here, uh, Francisco, open door. It gives you the time and which GDS uh, it's used and what virtual number it's used. So it gives you a lot of information. We have all the administrator logs that gives you information about what changes were made on the GDS and who made uh, those uh, changes. And the last part, which is this one is a nice feature, it's called attendance management. You can actually use it to uh, create shifts, add members, uh, uh, create their own schedule. It's a lot, of, a lot of options that you can take advantage of here. You can also uh, schedule their vacation, uh, ask leave. Uh, it's a lot of options. Uh, for example, if you want to create, for example, time frame, I'm going to create a new one. You just tell, for example, the GDS uh, when, uh, for example, people can start uh, like uh, punching their PIN numbers to use the GDS. You can tell it, for example, uh, the employees can only uh, scan their RFID card between this time and stop at that time. So if they come to scan it after that, it's just not going to work. So that, this is uh, some of the features. Uh, on which you can use the attendance uh, management. I think we tried to cover most of the things. There are still a lot of things that we, uh, we can talk about. If you have any questions about them, please feel free to ask, and I'll be glad to, uh, to answer them for you. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Abdal. So yeah, now we can go into the question and answer session. So you can use the chat feature on the right-hand side of your web browser to submit your questions. Um, and then Abdel will be able to answer all of them for you here. Um, and then, of course, if down the road you are installing this and have some questions, always reach out to us through our help desk. Um, make sure you log in through your, um, your Reseller Connect account, and any of our engineers will be able to assist you promptly with any more specific needs. All righty, Abdel, let's uh, go ahead and get started. So first question we actually received a little bit earlier in the presentation. Um, so the question is, for a multi-tenant building, for example, are there any interchangeable keys or buttons uh, that you can use just to have three buttons only um, for that type of deployment scenario?
So I believe this is possible. Um, let's, I've, what I'm assuming is being asked is that, um, you know, let's say you have three tenants that, you know, maybe one, two, or three can uh, call that exact number, uh, ten, you know, exact number of building, but four through zero, for example, can't be used, like in order to block out those other keys. Is that a configuration setting you can do? Oh, so you only want to use like certain numbers? This is something that you can only, you can do it, but it's like work around. You have to do it through whatever uh, virtual numbers that you use or the SIP uh, numbers that you use, but you can't block like certain numbers on the keypad to be used. Okay, great, thank you. All right, next question. Um, what is the spec on the RFID card? The RFID has to be, uh, I'm gonna show it to you right here. It has to be uh, 41, uh, what do you call it, EM 41,000, and it has to be 25 uh, kilohertz. And as long as it meets those um, standards, then you, any RFID card yeah, is right. compatible. Yeah, this is what I was going to try to show him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it has to be, as I said, 125 kilohertz and EM 4100. You can purchase RFID cards through your distributor. Um, however, you can also use third-party ones that match those, um, those settings. Um, as for a recording of this, we will definitely be uh, compiling a recording and sending that out to you within the next few days. So everyone attending the meeting will definitely have this for access. We'll also have it on Reseller Connect in the webinar section if you'd like to reference it there as well. Um, let's see, you can keep uh, sending in the questions through the, the chat feature if you'd like. Um, and again, if you don't remember them, um, you can always, or don't remember your question right now, you can always um, open a ticket through our help desk. Make sure you open up through your Reseller Connect account, um, or you can email us at info at brandstream.com as well. All right, we'll sit tight just for a few more minutes if you'd like to continue sending questions through the chat. So I'm not sure if, if you, uh, Matthew, I'm not sure if you're talking about the, the built-in scanner on the GDS. If that is the case, you can't use it with a third-party uh, uh, controller. You can actually use a third-party card scanner with the GDS, but you can't use the GDS to be as a third-party, as a card scanner for third-party controller. Great, thank you. Um, and then the next question, where can I get the device to read the RFID cards? Um, we actually also sell that through distributors as well. So you can purchase the wall mount, um, the RFID card um, scanner, and as well as the RFID cards and fobs through distributors, through your distribution channel. And if there are any other questions, please be sure to submit them through the chat. We won't be using the raise hand feature today. Uh, but you can submit them through the chat and we will address them uh, live um, over the webinar. All right, we'll give you guys a few more minutes uh, before we wrap up in order to submit some more questions if you have them. So it looks like uh, we have no more questions, but just as a reminder, we will send a recording of the webinar. 
um, to everyone who attended. We'll also have it available for you on Reseller Connect in the webinar section. If you have any questions or need more uh, technical help, feel free to reach our engineering th team through the help desk. If you're a reseller, make sure you enter the help desk through your Reseller Connect account. Um, additionally, we do have a chat on our website if you do have any questions about buying or need to be connected with a reseller or distributor for the GDS 3710. Uh, so thank you very much, Abdel, for uh, your assistance with the training webinar. I know thank I you. obviously could not uh, do that training portion for everyone. Mm -hmm. And uh, thank you, everyone who attended today as well. And have a great rest of your day.